Murphy, welcome to lesson 5.1. In this lesson, we're going to be introducing the concept of fractions, and we're going to go right down to the very beginning using what are called manipulatives. And these are called fraction blocks. Now, fraction blocks have advantages, and they'll help you understand the very basic understanding of how fractions work for addition, subtraction, and simplification. But they do have difficulties a little bit later on when we start getting to more complicated fractions like fourths or fifths or sevenths or eighths. So we're only going to work with the beginning of them, and you'll get a chance to add, subtract, and, uh, you know, and, and manipulate them. Now, I know you're at home, and you probably don't have a set with you, so you're just going to have to watch me work with them. And if you do want to come and get a set and work with them at lunchtime here at class, in the classroom, you're welcome to come and do this. So in grade 6, we know that uh, a fraction is part of a whole or part of a set. We'll be exploring this more in this unit. And last year we drew objects and shaded them in to show the fractions to work with them. This year we're going to be going one step further and adding and subtracting them. So at this time of year in my classroom, I would have handed you out a set of fraction blocks. And this is what they look like. You have four of them to work with right now. The large one is called the hexagon, and it's yellow. And it represents the number one. When it's full, you have like a whole pizza with no pieces missing. And that means you have one whole pizza. The red one is called the trapezoid, and it is one half. The blue is a rhombus, and it is one third. And the green one is a triangle, and that represents one sixth. So the question would be, why is the red, trape the red trapezoid equal to a half? Well, if you look here, you'll see that it takes two red trapezoids to actually create the same amount of area or to fully cover a, a yellow uh, hexagon. So that means that one half plus another half actually equals two halves for one full hexagon. So the red trapezoid represents one half for us. We can do the same exercise with the blue rhombuses. You can have one third, another third, and another third. When you put them all together, they will fully cover this yellow and you will have one full uh, hexagon. So one third, one third, and one third adds up to give you um, one full hexagon, or three thirds. So we know that a blue one, because it's one third of the hexagon, is re representing one third. Same exercise with the green ones. You'll see here I've got a whole bunch of green ones. There are six of them. And since six of them can be combined together, that gives us six sixths it would fully cover this green, sorry, the, the yellow hexagon. So therefore, we know that the yellow one, the green one, sorry, is a one-sixth. So we can use these things to do simple questions. So for example, what is one-sixth plus one-sixth? Well, since the green triangle represents a sixth, you can take one green triangle, you can put it on the hexagon, and you can add a second green triangle to them, and you'll notice that you have one six plus one sixth, and that is equal to two sixths. So it's just two of them. And you'll also should notice that if you take a look at the same type of a question here, I have a green triangle here, and I have another green triangle. If I put them both on the yellow hexagon like this, it will be the same area as a blue one, a one third. So we know that the blue is one third, so we now know that two sixths is the same area as one-third, so we know that these two things have to be equal. So two-sixths is equal to one-third. They're called equivalent fractions. For the next example, what's one-third plus one-third? Well, if I take my yellow hexagon out and I put one-third plus one-third on it, you'll see that it covers two-thirds of the yellow hexagon. So that means that one-third plus one-third is equal to two-thirds. Now what happens when we add different size shapes? Well, to answer this question, if you got out a yellow hexagon and we wanted to add the fractions one-half and one-third, you would take one-half and put it on your hexagon and one-third. Now because you don't have equal area uh, shapes, we can't say that this is two-halves or two-thirds. So we have to find something that we can cover up these two shapes with the hexagon and sorry the, uh, the trapezoid the red one and the blue one we need to find a shape that I can cover these with 
that will cover them exactly. And if I use the green triangles, you'll see that they will cover the shapes perfectly. Underneath here, this is where the red hexagon used to be. Sorry, the red uh, trapezoid was. And here is where the blue one used to be. So this was one third. And this was one half. Now, if you take a look at what I've got here, I've got one, two, three, four, five of the six triangles, the green triangles, which will cover this total area. So I now know that one half plus one third is the same as five sixths in area. So what happens is one half plus one third is equal to five sixths. Let's take a look at another example then. If I take one sixth plus one third, I put the one sixth green triangle on the on the hexagon, and I put the one third uh, blue rhombus on the hexagon. You'll notice that it covers exactly one half of it, and you can see that that means that this plus this has to equal the red one, which is one half. So one third plus one sixth equals one half. What about two thirds plus two thirds? Now we have a problem because two-thirds plus two-thirds won't fit on one single hexagon. So this is where we get into what are called mixed fractions. All I need to do is to take this particular yellow one here, let's put that right, blue one, and I can move it, and I can cover this space, and that will give me one full hexagon. So there's my one full hexagon right there. I still have one-third here, so that means that two-thirds plus two-thirds is the same as one full one and one-third left over. So it's one and one-third. You can also think of this as being two-thirds plus two-thirds. And that's equal to four-thirds. Because they're the same shape, we can use this type of an addition also. Now, there's nothing wrong with four-thirds or with one and one-third. They're the same amount of area, so they're equal fractions. This particular one is called a mixed fraction. And this one here is called an improper fraction, and you should remember that from grade 6. Taking a look at the next one. 2 thirds plus 1 half. Well, you get out two hexagons, and you can put 2 thirds on one of the hexagons, and you can put 1 half on the other. And now you'll notice we have a problem, because they won't exactly work together to cover one hexagon. But I can take the 1 half... And I can make one half up with a blue two thirds and a one sixth, because those two will create the same area as a half. Now that will allow me to take this blue one and put it right here. That will cover the rest of the third of that one hexagon. So I now have one full one, and I have a sixth left over. So my answer is one and one sixth. Okay, we have other options that we can use here. We could use a, um, what are basically called fraction circles. We're not going to use this in our classroom. The curriculum requires me or, or, you know, gives me the opportunity as your teacher to teach this in as many ways as I wish. However, teaching grade 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and actually into grade 10, 11, and 12, I know that fraction blocks have limited use. So rather than complicate things and teach you how to use fraction blocks, fraction circles, and fraction strips, we're going to stick with just the fraction blocks and stop there and then go directly into what we call symbolic, which is just numbers. However, here's a look at it so you can get an idea of how it works. 12 is a wonderful number because it's got so many different factors. You can divide, chop 12 equally into 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So you can have 1s. And here's one, uh, one twelfth of a, a fraction circle. So anytime I want to add twelfths, I could just use one of the pieces of the sector here. I could also divide them into pairs, and that gives me sixths. I can divide them into thirds. That gives me quarters. And divide them up into fours, which gives me thirds. And I could divide them up into half, uh, sort of sixes, and that would give me halves. And I could add them and do the same thing I was doing with the fraction blocks. We're not going to do that in our class. Okay, and if you want to go through your notes, you can take a look at how to add them. I've given an explanation here. 
I'm not really concerned as to whether you learn how to use the fraction circles. If you wish to do it and you want to go through the efforts, go for it. But I'm not going to be testing you on it, neither am I going to be using them in your notes. Okay, so if you have any difficulties, go back and look at it, or you can come and talk to me, and I will help you with more examples that you can use. Okay, so work on the assignment, and we'll see you next lesson.